Hello children and welcome to your digital classroom study with Sudhir. I am T.S. Sudhir and today we will be looking at a short story as part of the ICAC class 10 English literature syllabus. But before I start, please subscribe to the channel and also press on the bell icon so that you can get regular updates every time we post a video. It's already October, not too much time and of course you would be having the first pre-finals in the month of November I guess. So a lot of ground to cover and I would hope to have all the chapters there, all the poems there, so that you can get the explanation very, very clearly when you come to this digital classroom. So do subscribe and also share the videos with your friends and spread the word. Okay. So today we are going to be looking at All Summer in a Day. It is a science fiction kind of a story by Ray Douglas Bradbury. In fact, there are even films. So it may not be a bad idea for you to just go to YouTube and look at some of the films on All Summer in a Day which have been made for that, so that you get an idea about what is the kind of setting that Ray Bradbury had in mind when he wrote this particular story. It's about eight pages on this book. So we would go a little fast so that you understand the poem but the themes of the poem and the kind of messaging from the poem is extremely interesting it's it, 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 it's, it's a story which I really enjoy because the larger messaging is something which holds true and has a lot of importance for each one of us as I said the setting is in Venus it's not on earth the setting is on planet Venus where it keeps raining 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 every day all the time except for an hour once in seven years. So you, you see the kind of very interesting setting that this storyteller has put in front of us. And then there are this bunch of children who are all waiting for the sun to come out for that one hour. And then there are different kinds of people. And we would also go into how the lack of sunlight affects the mindset, the behavior pattern of all these children except that one girl Margaret right who is the protagonist of this particular story so that's the broadly the story of uh, all summer in a day but it, I would implore you that do not look at YouTube videos which just tell you the gist of the story when you go to see a movie you would like to see the full movie you wouldn't want to be told the gist of the movie before you go to the cinema hall right I would expect the same attitude here. Do not just go for the gist of the story, which kind of tells you without allowing you to understand and more importantly, appreciate and enjoy what the storyteller has put. There are such interesting words and phrases that the storyteller has used in this particular story. And the fun and the joy in literature is essentially to be able to appreciate it and look at different interpretations of the very same word phrase or paragraph that's the fun in studying literature and that's the way i studied literature uh, many years ago um, both at the graduate level and the postgraduate level and i would expect that you should also look to reading literature in the same way understand it enjoy it and then of course we'll all have the exam oriented approach as well but before that you should definitely look to enjoy literature and not just look for the shortcuts shortcut methods in order to be able to do the story. Don't look at it as a chapter in your book. Read it as a story. Okay. Ready? In fact, ready is the first word of this particular story as well. So have the book in front of you. Have a pencil, the basic rules. Have a book in with you. Have a pen so that you can take down notes and also underline the keywords in this story. Ready? Question mark. Ready? Question mark. Now, soon. Do the scientists really know? Will it happen today? Will it? So this is a conversation taking place whether the sun will actually come today. The scientists have predicted that today is the day that the sun will actually come out on planet Venus after a gap of seven years. Seven years of continuous rain but today for an hour or so the sun will come out. So obviously the children on planet Venus are extremely excited about this natural phenomena that is going to take place once in seven years. Look, look, see for yourself. The children press to each other like so many roses, so many weeds, intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun. So they're all looking out. In fact, later on in the story, you will know that they're all, it's almost like underground. So from there, they're peering out. Um, and they are like different kinds of children. There are roses, there are weeds, all intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun because they believe that the sun is hidden somewhere and it would take its time sometime today to come out 
and show them the effect of sunlight. It rained and rain was a continuous phenomena on planet Venus. Roses, weeds, intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun is it kind of it's a symbolism of different kind of students who are there on that at that particular place on Venus planet. Now it had been raining for seven years. Thousands upon thousands of days compounded and filled from one end to the other with rain, with the drum and gush of water. So just look at the description. Just look at the choice of words used by Ray Bradbury in this particular description of how planet Venus really was. It had been raining for seven years, thousands upon thousands of days, 365 into seven years, compounded and filled from one end to the other with rain, with the drum and gush of water, with the sweet crystal fall of showers and the concussion of storms so heavy. Concussion is essentially a heavy blow on the head. You would have seen when a ball hits a cricketer's head and then there is a blood clot, clot and there is a concussion. That's the medical term which is used. Here also he says that the storms are so heavy that it's almost like a concussion on planet Venus. There were tidal waves come over the island. So there is this rain and there is continuous rain as a result of which there are tidal waves and then there are heavy storms all the time over the planet Venus. A thousands forest had been crushed under the rain because the rain ferocity is so much that a thousand forests have been crushed under the rain and again grown up a thousand times because the more water you get obviously there is dense vegetation all over the place and this was the way life was forever on planet Venus and this was the schoolroom of the children of the rocket men and women who had come to a reigning world to set up civilization and live out their lives. So all these children had apparently come to planet Venus. They were the children of scientists who had come to set up civilization. So you see this is a piece of science fiction, a science fiction story which has been created by Ray Douglas Bradbury. So all these people knew that this was the way life was on Venus. They had come from Earth presumably and they were there as the children of scientists, people who dealt with rockets who were there to set up civilization on this alien planet called Venus. It's stopping, it's stopping. So, so one of them exclaims that the rain seems to be stopping. So when the rain stops is when the sun is likely to come out. That's what they have been told by the scientists, which in this case would mean their parents. Yes, yes, Margaret stood apart from them, from these children who could not, who could, who could ever remember a time when there wasn't rain and rain and rain. They were all nine years old. Which means that the last time they had seen the sun was when they were just two years old and obviously they did not remember anything from that time when they were toddlers just about two years old. And if there had been a day seven years ago, the last time that the sun had come on planet Venus, seven years ago when the sun came out for an hour, for an hour. So this is when the author gives you a sense of what the scientific phenomena is on planet Venus, that the sun came out for an hour seven years ago when these children who are now nine years old were just two years old and obviously they did not they do not have a memory of what happened on that particular day for an hour when the sun came out for an hour and showed its face to the stunned world they could not recall stunned because they were obviously stunned to see this phenomenon which they are not used to seeing they are used to seeing only rain all the time so they were obviously rather surprised and perplexed and stunned to see this phenomena of the sun and sunlight. Sometimes at night she heard them stir in remembrance and she knew they were dreaming and remembering gold or a yellow crane or a coin large enough to buy the world with. Before that I just want to tell you that the author has introduced this character called Margaret but he hasn't told us about Margaret as to why she is standing apart from these children. Right? He has not given it but he just very deftly introduced this character about Margaret and evoked and tickled your curiosity as to who is this girl called Margaret. But sometimes at night, Margaret heard them stir in remembrance because she thought that at night she heard them move around a bit and she thought that perhaps they are remembering the time from seven years ago that they had seen the sun. Uh, remembering gold or a yellow crayon, gold or a yellow crayon or a coin large enough to buy the world with. Those are the memories of the sun. And it is she 
who knows this is how the sun looks like and we'll come to know why she knows and the others don't know. So she's imagining that they would be remembering it like this. They don't but she does. She knew they thought a remembered, a, she knew they thought they remembered a warmness like a blushing in the face. Again, this is something which Margaret thinks they know but they do not actually know that they remembered a warmness, a warmness associated with the sun, like a blushing in the face, in the body, in the arms and legs and trembling hands. But then they always awoke to the tatting drum, tatting drum as in when the raindrops are pattering on the drum. So it creates that sound called the tatting drum, which is why I say, just look at the choice of words, tatting drum, such beautiful English in which, with which he has actually explained and created an atmosphere of continuous rain, which is why I say, you should not look at the gist of the story, but look to actually read the entire story. The endless shaking down of clear bed necklaces upon the roof, the walk, the gardens, the forest and their dreams were gone. Because when it continuously rained, they kind of upset the rhythm of their dreams and the dreams were gone. Because the rain was a reality that they lived with for seven long years, except for an hour when the sun would come out. All day yesterday they had read in class about the sun. So almost in preparation, in anticipation of what would happen the next day, the previous day they had read in class about the sun. About how like a lemon it was and how hot. So just look at the words that have been used for the sun. Hot, lemon, a coin so large, a yellow crayon, a gold crayon, a warmness associated with the sun. And they had written small stories or essays or poems about it. I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just an hour. So that is the kind of imagery that the children who have never known the sun before or at least remembered the sun from their experience of seven years ago thought of the sun. I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just an hour. It rhymes. That was Margaret's poem because she's the one who knows it. Read in a quiet voice in the still classroom while the rain was falling outside. And then one of the boys protests, Ah, you did not write that. Okay. I did, I did, said Margaret. William, said the teacher. But that was yesterday. So yesterday she has been bullied by this boy called William who tells her that you did not write this poem because she's the one who says, I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just an hour. Now the rain is for slackening and the children were crushed in the great thick windows. Thick windows as in a lot of green foliage vegetation which is there on the windows thanks to the permanent rain. So there is a lot of foliage which is why the use of the word thick. Where is teacher? She'll be back. That's today. Okay. This was yesterday and now it's today. Where is teacher? She'll be back. She had better hurry. We will miss it. They turned on themselves like a feverish wheel all tumbling spokes. Margaret stood alone. She was a frail girl who looked as if she had been lost in the rain for years and the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes and the red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair. These are important phrases and I would request you to underline these words because this is the change which has come upon her as a result of not being exposed to the sun and the sunlight. Right? So she did not have the blue in her eyes, the red in her mouth or the yellow in her hair. Okay? And they turned on themselves, it also kind of refers to how close they were all turning themselves like a feverish wheel. She was an old photograph dusted from an album. So one of the questions that could be asked is that what was the change in Margaret as a result of not being exposed to the sun for many years now. So these are some of the phrases that you should use in order to show your familiarity with the story. So you should underline it and remember all these phrases that the blue from her eyes, the red from her face and the yellow from her hair, uh, red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair she had lost and she looked like an old photograph dusted from an album. You know the photographs which are there in the album, if you don't open it for a long time, they look almost sepia, they acquire a bit of a yellow kind of a tinge. And it's if she spoke at all, her voice would be that like a ghost. So it was a bit of a husky, uh, dry kind of a voice. And now she stood and the words may not be very clear. And now she stood separate, staring at the rain and the loud, wet world beyond the huge class. Right? So, these are the key words that, as I said, you need to underline 
and remember those keywords. What are you looking at? Said William. So Margaret and William, the two protagonists, two main characters in this uh, particular story who are identified by their names. What are you looking at? Said William. Margaret said nothing. Speak when you are spoken to. Speak when you are spoken to. Now what does this very harsh tone convey? It conveys the attitude of a bully. He gave her a shove. He pushed her. But she did not move. Rather, she let herself be moved only by him and nothing else. They edged away from her. They would not look at her. So she was, in a sense, isolated. And we will come to why she was isolated by the other students in the class. She edged away from her. They edged away from her. They would not look at her. She felt them go away. And this was because she would play no games with them in the echoing tunnels of the underground city. So this is an underground city which I was talking before. There were these huge classes on which there was dense foliage and vegetation and they were all below and they were looking up at the sky to see whether it would stop raining and the sunlight would come. And this was because she would play no games with them in the echoing tunnels. So echoing as in they could hear their own voice back in the underground city. If they tanked her and ran, she stood blinking after them. So she was someone who did not mix with the others. She obviously thought she was different from the rest of the students. And she kept staring and blinking and not really mixing with the other students and did not follow. When the class sang songs about happiness and life and games, her lips barely moved. She did not take part in the activity that the other students took part in. Only when they sang about the sun and the summer did her lips move as she watched the drenched windows. So the only thing that she associated herself with or she took part in was when they spoke about the sun and the sunlight and the summer. And then of course the biggest crime of all when she, that she had come here only five years ago. Now the author is giving you some more details. And the biggest crime of all was that she had come here only five years ago from earth and she remembered the sun and the way the sun was and the sky was when she was four in Ohio. Right? So she is also nine years old but she has seen the sun till the age of four. So her memory about the sun is much better than the other children who had last seen the sun when they were two years old. Okay, so she was in Ohio which is in the USA and do you remember the other story where Ohio is also mentioned as part of your syllabus? We did that lesson that is about Jesse Owens, uh, my greatest Olympic prize where he was a second year student at the Ohio State University. So this is the second uh, short story in which Ohio is mentioned. Right. So when she was four in Ohio is when she moved from Ohio to the planet Venus, which is why she has a better memory of the sun. And they had been on Venus all their lives, all their lives, all their nine years. And they had been here they, and they had been only two years old when last the sun came out and had long since forgotten the color and the heat of it and the way they really, it really was. But Margaret remembered. But Margaret remembered. It's like a penny, she said once, eyes closed. That it's like a penny. No, it's not, the children cried. It's like a fire in this stuff, she said. Because she obviously remembers the sun much better than the other children. You are lying, you don't remember, cried the children. But she remembered and stood quietly apart from all of them and watched the patterning windows. The patterning windows, because of the raindrops falling on it, when the raindrops fall on the windows, they form a certain pattern as you would have seen. So the author is referring to the patterning windows. Again, I say, look at the beautiful manner in which he has spoken. The earlier beautiful phrase that he used was tatting drum. And once a month ago, she had refused to shower in the school shower rooms, had clutched her hands to her ears and over her head, screaming the water must not touch her head. So in a sense, it also conveys the hatred that she has for the raindrops, for the water. And so after that, dimly, dimly she sensed it, she was different. She was different from the other children who had never been exposed to the sun except for that one hour when they were two years old. And they knew her difference and kept away. There was talk that her father and mother were taking her back to earth the next year. So all these children have come from earth. They were been there all their lives. But this particular girl, Margaret, is going to be taken back to earth the next year when she would be 10 years old. And that also created a lot of resentment and jealousy and envy. It seemed vital to her that they do so, though it would mean the loss of thousands of dollars to her family. It would mean a lot of loss in monetary terms. But 
they wanted to do it for margaret because the sun meant so much to her because without the sun she was a pale shadow like an old photograph dusted from an album and so the children hated her for all these reasons of big and little consequences they were jealous they were bullies because they did not understand that she knew remembered the sun much better than her they accused her of lying so this is what also apart from what margaret knew the other question that can be asked is what does it show about the other children in that particular classroom so you should be able to tell that because of the manner in which they reacted especially william to margaret in that particular classroom and so the children hated her for all these reasons of big and little consequence they hated her pale snow face again keywords please underline they hated her pale snow face her waiting silence her thinness and her possible future her possible future is where she would go back to earth unlike these other children who are consigned and condemned to live their life on the planet venus get away the boy gave her another push what are you waiting for then for the first time she turned and looked at him and what she was waiting for for was in her eyes well don't wait around here said cried the boy savagely you won't see anything her lips moved nothing he cried it was all a joke wasn't it he turned to the other children nothing is happening today is it so they are trying to mislead margaret they are trying to mislead her by telling her that nothing is happening today the sun is not going to come today they all blinked at him and then understanding laughed and shook their heads so they all caught on to the joke that the attempt to mislead that is being attempted by the boy that is william nothing nothing oh but margaret whispered her eyes helpless but this is the day the scientists predict they say they know the sun all it a joke said the boy and seized her roughly hey everyone let's put her in a closet before the teacher comes so they want to punish her because they know that the sun is going to come out but they do not want her to experience this particular phenomena of the sun coming out once in 7 years after a gap of 7 years so they want to put her in a closet so that she does not get to have the experience no said margaret falling back no because she's for a when it comes to the sun we have seen that margaret is much more affirmative much more vehement in her she wants to ensure that they do not push her into the closet so it's a it's a show of protest it's a show of vehement protest because why because the sun is important to margaret they searched about her caught her up and bore her protesting and then pleading and then crying back into a tunnel a room a closet where they slammed and locked the door so they pushed her into a room a closet which is a small kind of a place where she will be trapped she cannot come out and they have closed the door and put her away where nobody can hear her voice as it is her voice is almost like a whisper she speaks like a ghost as we have already been told by the author they stood looking at the door and saw it tremble from her beating and throwing herself against it so she is protesting again because experiencing the sun and the sunlight is important to margaret they heard her muffled cries muffled because one her voice is like a ghost one number two she is inside a closet where her voice cannot come outside then smiling just look at the evil behavior of the students then smiling they turned and went out and back down the tunnel just as the teacher arrived so now the teacher has arrived but they have done this extremely sinister job of locking margaret inside the closet before the teacher arrived she doesn't know about it ready children she glanced at her watch because she knows now is the time for the sun to come out because the scientists have predicted it accurately on venus yes said everyone are we all here yes the boys the the students are not just bullies they are also they are not just jealous they are also untruthful they are liars they lie that everyone is there the rain slacked little more they crowded slacked as in slowed down they crowded to the huge door they just about to go out the moment it stops raining the rain stopped it was as if in the midst of a film concerning an avalanche a tornado a hurricane a volcanic eruption something had first gone wrong with this sound apparatus look at the manner in which it's so beautiful ray bradbury has described this particular scene because it was like continuous rain continuous rain comes with its own sound all the time it's like an avalanche avalanche is when mountains crumble and a lot of snow comes down uncontrollably a tornado a hurricane all very natural phenomena that the author is using a volcanic erup eruption with the lava coming out something had first gone wrong because suddenly when the rain stopped 
first time in seven years it was almost somebody had switched off the volume the sound apparatus right so there suddenly there was a stillness you understand suddenly there was a stillness because the rain the continuous pattering of the rain like a tightening drum had stopped right thus muffling and finally cutting off all noise all of the blasts and repercussions and thunders and then second ripped the film from the projector and inserted in its place a beautiful tropical slide which did not move or tremor so it was like in another film another movie that was now being screened in place of the continuous rain on planet venus the silence was so immense and unbelievable the silence was so immense and so unbelievable that you felt your ears had been stuffed or you had lost your hearing altogether the children felt as though they had not they had lost their sense of hearing they were not able to hear any sound so if a question comes about what are the changes that happen the the moment it stops raining and the sun is about to come out this are these are the key words that you need to remember and be able to explain in great detail how the author has so beautifully and so vividly described this particular scene the children put their hands to their ears you often see that when we are kind of getting off an aircraft when the plane is landing you get that kind of a very different kind of a vacuum in your ears they stood apart the door slid back and the smell of the silent waiting world came into them the sun came out it was the color of flaming bronze and it was very very large and the sky around it was a blazing blue tile color and the jungle burnt with sunlight as the children released from their spell rushed out yelling into the spring time so what we will do is we will pause here this is going to be part 1 of all summer in a day i do not want to have a long one hour video playing out for you because you would also get tired and i want you to be completely concentrating on what this beautiful story is all about so we have done more than half the story so we will pause here this is part 1 of all summer in a day we'll continue with part 2 of all summer in a day and also do the analysis the explanation of the different themes of this particular story the influence of the sun the rain versus the sunlight the difference between venus and earth the talk of positive energy and of course the transformation which is trust me extremely interesting to read and to understand so do look out for part 2 of all summer in a day so that you can understand and look at both these videos in order to get an exhaustive understanding of all summer in a day so see you on part 2 of this particular story all summer in a day thank you very much